An Idaho woman is suing a Spokane fertility doctor after she says he used his own sperm as part of her treatment. Tonight, the daughter is speaking to Krim too. I said he matched as the father. And her initial response was, that can't be right. I mean, this started in August. We should have been cleaned up in September. We could have been building in October. And we're still waiting for testing. Plus, the healing continues for families in Elk and Chatteroy after the Oregon Road Fire. Tonight, how homeowners are getting ready for the next season of recovery. The last of the flurries are moving out of the region today, and I'm tracking plenty of sunshine for the weekend, but a continuation of very chilly temperatures. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on, on Creme 2 News at 5. I'm Whitney Ward. Mark is on assignment. We'll hear from him in just a moment. First, though, a Kootenai County woman is suing a former Spokane fertility doctor. She says he secretly used his own sperm to inseminate her 34 years ago. Creme 2's Nathan Hyun is joining us here in the studio now. He sat down with the woman's daughter and has her reaction to this startling case. Nathan? Well, Brianna Hayes is 33 years old and just moved to Hauser, Idaho to be with her mother. It wasn't until last year that she says she found out she shared DNA with her mother's fertility doctor. I felt immense guilt for even finding out in the first place. Brianna Hayes decided to take a 23andMe DNA test last March to see if her ongoing health issues were hereditary. I was trying to seek information about where this could have came from, where this could have happened. That's when the unthinkable happened. I had matched with um, half siblings. She matched with 16 people in eastern Washington whom she was related to but never knew. After doing some more digging, there was the match with Claypool. For 32 years of her life, Brianna believed she shared DNA with her father. That's when Brianna's mother Sharon told her she was born through inverto fertilization. My initial reaction was deeply rooted guilt for even finding out this information. But that's not all. Dr. David Claypool was Sharon's fertility doctor. She was equally in disbelief and shocked and she felt betrayed by her doctor. On Thursday, the Hayes family filed a lawsuit through the Spokane Superior Court. There are no laws that ban doctors from secretly using their own sperm during insemination procedures. But the lawsuit claims Dr. Claypool violated the state's medical malpractice statute, which requires doctors to get informed consent from patients for treatment. It's very clear what informed consent is, and in this case, uh, Sharon selected a profile that was clearly not Dr. Claypool. R.J. Armola, the Hayes family lawyer, says he's confident they have a strong case. We feel very confident that uh, he violated the medical malpractice uh, statutes. Documents claim Sharon Hayes was told the DNA belonged to an anonymous donor. She knew that she consented to the profile that she selected based on my dad. She did not consent to him. Krem 2 reached out to Dr. Claypool's lawyer, who said the lawsuit is currently in litigation. The lawyer had no other comment at this time. It's been a tremendous impact on, on my life personally and also just on my mom and our relationship and navigating through all of this. Brianna says she hopes to get justice and also influence new laws so an incident like this doesn't happen again. And the lawsuit is currently filed as a civil case and seeks financial damages. The case will have a court hearing sometime in February. In the studio, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. All right, now switching gears, taking another look at our top story this evening, which is the weather. We've made it to the weekend, tracking some bitter cold temperatures, though, as we head across the inland northwest. So let's go straight to meteorologist Michelle Boss. Yeah, we're seeing the last of the flurries kind of exit out the region. Uh, we'll take a look at satellite and radar in just a moment. But as the skies start to clear, we are looking at some very chilly temperatures tonight and tomorrow morning, even colder than what we've seen the last couple of mornings. And those were already a big drop from last week. We're currently sitting at 35 degrees right now in Spokane, about 40 40 minutes before sunset as we lose those blanket that blanket of clouds those temperatures may fall even more dramatically 34 in Coeur d'Alene it's in the low 30s in Pullman still in the low 40s in Lewiston and a little bit warmer in central Washington as well where they had a little bit more sunshine earlier this afternoon uh, we took a little bit longer to see those clouds break up so temperatures did not get out of the 30s here in Spokane so it has been a chilly day but those skies again should be clearing overnight as those lows slip down into the lower 20s some spots may see lows in the upper teens tonight, but on the upside, we are expecting plenty of sunshine for the weekend. So sunny skies both Saturday and Sunday. Highs will be cooler than average, though, in the lower to mid 40s. Michelle, thank you.
Wintering after a wildfire. People impacted by summer wildfires are still struggling right now with delays and it is keeping them from cleaning up and moving on. Krem 2's Shannon Mowdy checked back in with one elk resident who is still in limbo. It's been more than two months since Annie Patrick lost the home she calls God's grace in the Oregon Road fire. And a month since she first told Krem 2 News about the asbestos testing holding her back from moving on. I had one test out of 90, one test that turned out positive. As the seasons change, Annie's still waiting to move forward. Which is why Gary Randall, after seeing her story online, offered to come from Aberdeen to retest her property for free. I watched it and I just, I, I thought it was just ridiculous what I was hearing. Um, that she was going to have to pay $86,000 for one positive sample. Randall says he's sticking to Spokane Regional Clean Air's strict and specific testing guidelines, which means sifting through the burned material grid line by grid line. But at least one part of Annie's situation has changed since she last spoke to Creme Toulouse. She's now back on her own property, ready to spend the winter in her new home. I feel a lot more at home, oh, even though it's a tiny home, I'm here. She says she's even more fortunate than some of her neighbors. She has electricity and plumbing, but even that's cold comfort. I mean, this started in August. We should have been cleaned up in September. We could have been building in October, and we're still waiting for testing to move forward. It'll be Christmas. A major part of the problem for many in Elk and Medical Lake is a backlog with hundreds of homes needing asbestos testing. So that's what's happened here. The, the local labs are set up for what they normally have, the normal patterns of testing and, and clearance testing and stuff like that. Well, it's been inundated. Randall will send these samples to a lab out of the area. Until those results come in, Annie's still waiting on her plans to build a new roof, a new foundation to God's grace rising out of the ashes. Shannon Mowdy. God knows he may find asbestos after all this, and I could be in worse trouble. <laughs> Come to news. We do have some sad news in our newsroom just this afternoon. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward's mother has passed away. We told you yesterday how the mayor was going out on family leave effective immediately. We're told she is now expected to return to work sometime next week. Scam calls happen to everyone, but have you ever wondered what a scammer is actually thinking? Well, one of the con artists on the other side of the phone is now sharing his side of the story. What made you uh, decide to stop being a scammer? Why'd you kind of reform yourself? She noticed that I'm a scam, so she wanted to know who I really am. She wanted to see my face. You know, I know it was, it's, it's, it's very risky for me to show her my face, but at, at the same time, I had this guilty conscience. Tonight on Creme 2 News at 6.30, we'll hear the full conversation about why one scammer did what he did and what made him stop. Now still ahead on Crime 2 News at 5, tens of thousands of people in southern Maine have been told they no longer have to shelter in place. In eight minutes, we'll have the latest on the manhunt for that suspected mass shooter. And I'm Mark Hanrahan live at Riverside High School tonight for our fourth installment of our hometown highlight segment. Hey, it is senior night tonight and we'll hear from a few of those seniors coming up right after the break. <laughs> 